Hi guys, back with another very uh, short video. Uh, since I received quite varying comments about my high-end thermal paste comparison, I wanted to approach my uh, uh, subject in a little uh, different way. So uh, a few people asked me what is the point on wasting this much time in uh, choosing a thermal paste when the temperature differences of the three thermal pastes I used in my last video were pretty much uh, next to nothing. So uh, I was checking my wares the other day and I found this old uh, tube of unused thermal paste which appears to be uh, an OEM thermal paste from Alphacool which I received among uh, some uh, water cooling gear I bought from them a good while ago. Uh, I of course have nothing against Alpha Cooling uh, general. I really think that their water cooling products are amazing. I have many items from uh, Alpha Cool in my custom water cooling loop, like a CPU water block, a tubing, a radiator, the uh, pump, and the reservoir, all the uh, uh, many items. But I just don't consider this uh, thermal paste option uh, being at the same level with any of the thermal pastes we tested last time. So this time I want to make a comparison between uh, what I would consider an entry-level thermal paste that comes included with the cooling uh, solution you purchase against one of the highest end options uh, available on the market. So we will be comparing the OEM paste against the winner of my last video, the Kimping Cooling KPX. Of course the uh, results uh, we're all uh, within the margin of error, but we will be testing it against the KPX anyways. Uh, so uh, we will be testing the uh, OEM paste exactly the same way. So uh, running the 9900K at 5.3 GHz, 1.3 uh, set V core in Prime 95 for 30 minutes, and then check what is the average uh, maximum core temperature measured by uh, core temp and see how the temperatures differ to the uh, KPX and generally to the three different thermal pastes uh, tested last time. Uh, this time I expect the difference to be from one degree to five degrees, so much higher than uh, what the differences uh, were last time. We will be applying the uh, thermal paste the exactly the same way, so a good amount of it on at the center of the CPU RHS and then just uh, spread it using the included spreader that came with the thermal grizzly cry out. I just want to point out by doing this test that you should not be saving money uh, in thermal paste so especially if you are investing let's say 100 plus euros in a good uh, 240, 280 or even a 360 millimeter radiator uh, all in one uh, water cooling solution or even a custom uh, water cooling loop what is the uh, impact of uh, saving money in thermal paste and uh, what, like how much potential uh, cooling performance you can lose. Of course, uh, I generally expect that the custom water cooling guys will be investing some money in a high quality thermal paste and even uh, deleting their CPU if, if they are using a CPU that is not soldered and using uh, liquid metal between the CPU core and the CPU IHS. But anyways, I want to make this comparison video as I have never used a thermal paste like this in my life before. So it will be int really interesting to see. Uh, so yeah, from here we will, we will be just uh, uh, going to uh, assemble the rig, apply this thermal paste and get the system going. I will get back to you once I start to uh, test the temperatures and in the end we will talk about the results and how this uh, test compares to the uh, uh, high-end thermal paste comparison video that I made last time. Uh, right guys, the test has been running for uh, roughly uh, 25 minutes now with the same uh, 5.3 GHz overclock on the Intel uh, 9900K with uh, the same uh, 1.3 uh, set uh, V-Core uh, with the same uh, uh, cache and memory uh, uh, speeds on the Z390 Dark and when looking at core temp we can clearly see that the uh, maximum temperatures are significantly higher than with the uh, 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 high quality 
aftermarket thermal paste options we tested last time. So I already calculated the average value of the uh, uh, maximum core temperatures measured by uh, core temp and it, and it is pretty much uh, spot on 80 degrees so it is uh, a, a few degrees worse than all the other three free, uh, pastes we tested last time and uh, when looking at uh, the ambient room temperature it is just around uh, 23 uh, degrees and uh, based on that we can cal cal calculate the uh, mm, delta temperature value so it is uh, 80 degrees minus let's say 22.9 57.1 degrees so the uh, OEM paste is performing a few degrees worse than the uh, uh, high quality paste options we tested la last time so the GC Extreme Crying out and the uh, Kimping Cooling KPX. Uh, I will let the test run a few more minutes, and once uh, 30 minutes has passed, I will make the final uh, uh, temperature measurements, and then we can get on to the conclusion. So, on to the results. The Alpha Cool uh, OEM thermal paste resulted in uh, 5.6 degrees worse in uh, maximum core temperatures on the average when compare, compared to the uh, uh, surrounding ambient room temperature. So the difference between uh, these two thermal pastes here was uh, significantly higher than what we saw when I compared the uh, uh, high-end thermal pastes against each other. So from here you of course have to make your own opinion that is it worth investing money in a high quality aftermarket thermal paste. Uh, I personally think that it really is. Uh, of course if you are going to be just running a low-end system that is meant to be run at stock the entire duration like what we see in uh, uh, computers in uh, uh, hospitals or libraries there it of course doesn't matter if the CPU temperature is 55 degrees or 75 degrees as long as the system is going to run stable and the whole uh, aimed time period before the whole system is replaced then of course you can happily use the uh, uh, thermal paste that is included with the cooling solution or just any uh, low-end cheap uh, thermal paste alternative as the temperature doesn't really matter that much but if you are going to be uh, building a new system now and you have any thoughts about overclocking and you are going to invest at least uh, some bit of money in your uh, uh, aftermarket cooling solution then I would happily recommend that you uh, uh, invest some money in a high quality uh, thermal paste like the Kimpin Cooling KPX or the, uh, the Gilly GC Extreme or any uh, thermal grizzly product like the uh, Cryonaut as the uh, temperature difference can be actually quite high what we just saw and uh, that 6 degree difference or even higher it can have a great impact on your possible uh, overclocking results uh, then there is of course liquid metal which has a better uh, thermal conductivity than even the best normal thermal pastes out there uh, but if you have any uh, thoughts about using it on top of the CPU IHS I don't really bother doing that because the uh, possible uh, gain in temperatures is extreme, uh, extremely minimal next to nothing so uh, I don't really bother doing it when it comes to using uh, thermal paste on top of the CPU IHS I only use uh, uh, the best possible uh, uh, normal thermal paste but if you are running a CPU that is not soldered and you are going to be uh, deleting it then you must use liquid metal between the CPU IHS and the CPU die itself to get the best possible uh, uh, results and if you are even going to be uh, trying a, a direct die cooling so let's say you are going to be running the uh, Debauer uh, direct die frame for X299 or even just trying a uh, direct die cooling in general on, on the mainstream socket then I would happily recommend that you use uh, liquid metal between the CPU core and the uh, uh, cooling solution which is often a water block to get the best possible uh, temperature results but as we can see the temperature difference can be actually quite high when we when we compare 
the two totally different class products against each other. So uh, yeah, do not just tell me that the uh, thermal phase use doesn't matter as yeah the temperature differences weren't that high when we compared the three best thermal pastes out there. But if you like this video, please uh, like and share it and subscribe to my channel and uh, see you next time.